Welcome back. Billionaire investor Carl Icahn making waves from Wall Street to Washington. His latest focus, corporate tax reform, recently launching a $150 million political action committee. This comes as Pfizer disclosed it is in talks to acquire Ireland based Allergan in a $100 billion plus deal in an effort to lower its tax rate. Icahn told me about what he believes Congress should be doing now. Well, I think they have to pass this bill really now, or you're going to see a major exodus of companies leaving the country. It's and, and you know just actually Warren Buffett did it with uh, Burger King a year ago, and now uh, Reed is doing it with Pfizer, and they're both saying what makes sense. They're both saying, "Hey, look, we I do shares for our companies, and we got to do what's right for the company." and it's it's ludicrous to ask these companies to pay a double tax, and that's what they're doing. In no other country in the world do you not have a territorial system where uh, you you pay the one tax in that country, and that's it. But you don't pay a double tax. So if you if you're a Turkish company and you sell something in England, very simplistically, you pay the English tax, but you don't pay it in Turkey. We're saying to these guys, you have to pay 35 percent extra, and they're not going to do it. And the risk is. That you're seeing all these companies leave, and and even if they don't leave, you take a company like Apple, they have 200 billion dollars over there. They're not going to just leave it, just lie there. So they're going to spend it over there instead of creating jobs or even even doing a buyback in this country keeps the money in this country. And by, by the way, sort of interestingly, if they do a buyback and somebody sells it a big profit, you know, you get a, you get an extra tax in this country from yeah. the person who sells. But it's it's almost idiotic. Not to do a deal now that you can do, which is get another eight percent, which most of these companies are willing to pay you, which would be another two hundred billion dollars coming into this country. Much of it could go for the highway bill, and it's not really adding to expenses. It, you know, because I know that uh, the the right wing, the Democrat, uh, the Republican Party doesn't want to add to expenses, so this wouldn't even add to it because this money comes in, right? And then you have this sort of uh, unwillingness to compromise. You have two camps in Congress, both at either ends of the continuum, while you have a lot of uh, people in the middle. Now, you have pledged $150 million to a political action committee that would lobby to reduce taxes on corporate profits. Well, well let me tell you, I've been working very assiduously at it right the last couple of weeks. Right. Believe me, I have other things to do. But I've been, I literally talked to, I'd say, 60 to 70 percent of the congressmen and senators on the House Ways and Committee in the House and on the Finance Committee in the Senate. And to a man, Maria, to a man, everyone I spoke to, and one woman, I believe, they all agreed completely. It's not like, you know, they had arguments and we were arguing. They said, hey, we have to get this done. And it's amazing that it's just there to be done. All of these guys on both committees that have to put this forth want to do it. Right. Every one of them. And so I don't quite understand what's holding it up. So what are you going to do with this super PAC? You know, I mean, look, I've heard Donald Trump talk about super PACs. He doesn't like them. He doesn't like money in politics. Tell me how this group is going to be effective, this super PAC that you're creating well, just to lobby corporate taxes coming down. Well, look, I'm trying to very hopefully get it done now, because if you don't get it done now, there's going to be this PAC is going to bring on accountability in Congress. We're going to just go and say, why? if it doesn't get done, I think it's going to be very harmful to this country. Because you're going to suddenly see, you know, you got Warren Buffett doing it, you got a big company like Pfizer doing it, a respected company. All these other guys are going to look at it, and they're saying, hey, let us do it too. Because what the hell, why should we pay the money? And you're going to see this happening. So I'm hoping that we're going to get this done in hopefully the next month or so. Yep. And if we don't, hey, then then what this pact will do, just as I've done in corporate America to some extent, I want to hold people accountable for not doing it. It's, you know, Congress has to be held accountable too. Right. And, and we're going to do that. But, you know, there's other things that this pact, I hope, will do, which is also bring – a reform in the corporations where you have better corporate governance. We're going to try to we're going to try to lobby 
to see better corporate governance because I think that's another major problem for this country. And you've been pursuing uh, AIG most recently, yeah. uh, wanting the company to to uh, basically move their mortgage insurance business, the life and mortgage insurance units, into public companies. What are you trying to achieve here, and why do you think the value is going to be much higher if, in fact, we see these, this split up? Well, you know, that's a good example, Maria, of where I think uh, I think something should be done and done almost immediately. AIG should definitely be split up. Actually, the government, you know, they're, they're a SIPI, and the, and the government is saying these companies that are too big to fail should be split up, and AIG would be much better off taking this company and splitting it into three or four parts or maybe selling a lot of, a lot of the divisions that they have. I don't think it's a well-run company. I think the costs are way, way, way too high. But more than that, they should do what the shareholders want. And I've talked to a number of shareholders in the last few weeks, and I tell you, the, the outpouring from these shareholders is, hey, get this done. And you see, here's, the, a company shouldn't be held hostage by management the board. But I'm not starting a proxy fight right now. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I spoke uh, to Mr. Hancock very uh, briefly. Uh, and, and he seems like a nice enough guy, so I look forward to talking to him. So I don't want to, you know, get this going right now. You're getting, you're getting me going. You're I, I got you. I, yeah, I yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. You're getting me going. I don't want to do it what yet. What have you got, like a 2% stake in AIG? Well, I'm not saying how much I have, but let me tell you, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot so, of stock. So, so let, me, let me get your take. I mean, you've got that proxy in your pocket if you want to use it. I mean, how far are you going to take this? What if they don't move, Carl? What if they decide, you know what, we're in charge, the stock has done well, the government made money, on this, we're going to keep going the way I, we're going. I, I think, Maria, I don't want to say what I'm going to do at this phone call, but you could judge from my past history. I'm, not, I'm not a shrinking violet, so <laughs> I, you, could, you could judge that, that it's not going to end here. Yeah, I, I like when you use the Teddy Roosevelt quote as well. I've been reading that a lot. Speak softly, but carry a big stick. Well, maybe you say carry an, an Uzi instead <laughs> of a big stick. <laughs> anyway, how long are you going to give AIG, Carl? What if this is not done by the end of the year? The end of which year? 2015. Well, you know, the end of two, you don't have much time until the end of 2015 to make a decision. I hope they will. I, I look. It's always better to have peace than war, and I hope that they listen to Shell because I think most of them say uh, uh, that that uh, something should be done, and something major should be done, and uh, I just hope that. They take cognizance of what the shareholders want to do there. It makes a lot of sense. Let me push back on, on, on one thing as, as we end here as my final question, because Larry Fink would tell AIG, don't listen to anybody who tells you to do something over the near term, that they just want to come in, move the stock, and get out. Well, let me, let me tell you, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, if you look at the average time I've held companies, I think it's longer than Larry Fink did. I, I, my average stock holding is five to seven years. In fact, ACF, I bought in the mid-'80s, and I still own it. And, and so, you know, it's nonsense to say that I'm a short-termist, and a lot of other guys like me that you would call short-termists aren't. I mean, there are some. Hey, look, like in any area, there are activists that, you know, you could criticize pretty badly. And I'm not going to name who I would criticize. But you've got great activists. And, and I think that – I don't think that Larry was even talking about me about short-termists because uh, I could show you my record.